Hey all, welcome to module seven, testing, debugging, and deploying call flows. So agenda here, um, obviously testing, debugging, uh, using the architect test and environment. Uh, it's not gonna be much uh, different than using what you would call a production environment, just using it in a dev or test testing phase, uh, debugging techniques and tools, and then deploying those call flows. So importance of testing, debugging. If you don't already know, um, Really, it's crucial for several reasons. One, making sure the efficient and smooth operation of your conduct center, uh, which also directly impacts customer satisfaction and overall success of your business. Also, making sure that call flows work as intended is vital because of delivering that seamless and efficient customer experience in your contact center. What, what you would hate to have happen is if you do not test and debug those and automatically go live with them, uh, your customer could all of a sudden get disconnected. Or maybe they press option one and they're routed back to the menu. Like you don't want, you want to make sure that through quality assurance or QA testing, as well as some U as your acceptance test and UAT, that you go through and verify that everything is done. Obviously, it all starts at the architect level and doing that functional testing to make sure that your your flows are working correctly from a functional standpoint before handing those off. It's always crucial to do that though. Making sure to avoid disruptions in the contact center is another crucial piece. Uh, maintains customer satisfaction, agent productivity, and overall customer or operational efficiency. So testing the, uh, or, or using the architect testing environment, it's nothing much dimmer, di or dimmer, nothing much, it's pretty much similar to everything else. So um, you know how we've created call flows, we've created queues and, and users and, and um, migrate it or how, you know, put all those together with a data action or data table and transferring to queues or whatever. All of that's exactly the same. Um, we usually, uh, in, in how I do it, I usually set a production and a, and a dev and have them side by side. They're named the exact same except production or prod and dev um, following that name. That way you always know that you're what you're testing in. Create the, the call route that we, we created in one of these uh, hands-ons. Um, add, add a number, even if you have to get a test number temporarily to add that test number to it, that's how you're going to call and test in there. Um, you're able to obviously go through and evaluate based off of um, any red icons that come up. That's going to be a good a good indicator if there's an issue. The yellow ones may be an indicator that there might be a problem. Um, usually that's based around uh, not not setting prompts in a certain spot. Make sure that you go through and test all that stuff. Simulated test calls is what I was just talking about. Real-time debugging, there is a debug um, feature under the publish. So when you go to publish, there's a drop down that you can hit debug it will actually pop up a box and give you uh, a URL to insert into uh, Genesis Cloud in order to make a call, a test call in there if you don't have a test number. Um, the error and warning notifications, that's where it, it's more labeled yellow and red. Um, you'll notice those differences. Uh, if it's if there's any warnings in, in, in yellow, those will let you publish. They still may not, you know, you may not have a prompt in there, so it may be blank audio that they're hearing and you don't want to do that. So you want to verify that, that is correct and what that does. Uh, and then the errors, obviously they will not let you publish. Make sure those are, those are fixed uh, before deploying. Um, make sure you're testing those fixes instead of, you know, you fix it and then publish it and you're ready to go. Make sure you test after that fix happens. Uh, any call traces, that's kind of the call log that we're talking about. That's a really good way. Uh, the common module you guys should have, and you should be able to import into your environment uh, and set that up and be able to then trace call logs. Um, those logs are then put into the interaction that you don't have to worry about um, having that. You'd be able to test that stuff out, look at that, make sure it's validated and it's going the right down the right path. Component validation, that's part of doing the validation or debug. Um, obviously, the the warning or error notifications are going to be a big key of of those components, uh, and whether you can actually publish or you need to go back and fix, and then real time feedback. So that feedback uh, is going to be live because of the the combination of the error and warning notifications, as well as that call flow or the uh, call log uh, debug uh, that's happening within the interaction. All of those together are going to are going to help you identify issues prior to going live. That way, we don't affect our customers. So accessing and using the test environment, it's the same way. Um, I put this stuff here just for, so you guys uh, don't have any question about it. You're really accessing everything the exact same way. You're going, you're logging in, you're going to the admin panel, you're accessing architect, you're going to open the call flow that you're looking to, to uh, make the changes on our test, go through and access that debug. Uh, you can debug it. It'll then give you that callable address from Genesis Cloud that you'll be able to use in the, in the, uh, in the call flow. 
Um, and then you can make, also you can make test calls. I usually just, I mean, the, the numbers that you get or a test number that I get from Genesis Cloud, it's a dollar a month. Like you might as well keep those and just use those for testing uh, future call flows. Your company, if you already are in Genesis Cloud now, probably has a, a subset of numbers you can use for testing. That's what I would always recommend. Do it from the customer perspective. That way you make sure that the customer experience is exactly how you want it. Uh, debugging and inspecting. As that test call progresses through your call flow, you can use Architects debugging tools and identify and resolve issues, clicking on the components, inspecting the, the variables, evaluating the conditions, and observing the flow's logic. You can, we do a lot of things with, uh, if something's not working right, reverse it and see what happens. So, you know, there could be a decision that's um, if flow.s uh, call agents equals or is greater than zero, make it less than zero and see what happens. Play with it a little bit. That way you understand what, what effect you're making in the change that happens. Uh, and then repeat your testing. Any change you make, repeat testing. Repeat testing um, multiple times. Go down every single path that you can. Try to make it error out. Um, even if you have, you know, if you put something into a data action, make, you know, change the call flow to uh, the input variable that is not right. See what path it goes down. Make sure everything from start to finish to happy fail paths are working correctly. So screenshot, here's that callable address that we're talking about. You go into the publish, you see that drop down on the right hand side of publish. That will list your debug. You'll be able to click on debug, which pops this box up then you would be able to go to your dial pad within Genesis Cloud, pop that in there, call it, it will go into here um, and, and test. Uh, it's gonna act like a normal call, so it's gonna act like having a test number. Uh, debugging techniques and tools, so disconnected components. Um, if they're not connected correctly, they may route, route as attended. Uh, most of this is kind of circumvented because the arrows obviously are right there. But let's say you flip the the disconnect, you know, you flip the components. One of the components uh, is above, like maybe the welcome message that is a variable is above the data action or above the data table. That would be an excellent because you wouldn't get that uh, that invite or that that prompt to welcome them to the call flow. Incorrect component configuration. That could be, you know, you have a data table that you have an that you have a uh, an Annie that you're going to put in, but maybe you didn't put call dot Annie. Maybe you put something different, and it didn't work right. That's an excellent way for the um, the call logs that would tell you the the information that's wrong. Uh, conditional logic. That's another thing. That's a that's a good one. You could have a switch or a a decision that isn't that isn't properly um, isn't properly spelled out. Uh, you could you could use wrong one of the wrong variables or something isn't working. Maybe you did less than or instead of greater than. So make sure you're you're reviewing that. Um, the nice thing is if you put call logs in to the flow at every path that it splits, you will have a step by step um, log that tells you exactly where it happened and what happened. Um, variable misuse, that's a good reason. A lot of data actions, data tables do that. If you're setting variables in the very beginning, like call dot Annie equals, flow.annie, for example, and for some reason you misspelled Annie, but in the rest of the call flow, you you know you have it spelled right. That could be misuse. Um, just make sure your your everything is uh, the flow behavior is acting correctly and identify those those issues. Loops and timeouts. You don't want infinite loops. You can have a loop that has 99 on it. Um, you don't want that. Uh, you want to to loop two or three times. Um, and then if it doesn't route, you know, if something's still not working right, you want that to route to an agent or at least to a voicemail or some kind of callback. You don't want them looping continuously until they hang up because then that's not a good experience. Inefficient call routing. Uh, this could be this could be a, a lot of different things. Let's say you have a couple menus. They press option one to go to sales and they go to say the, a sales menu and it's it's asking them, hey, press one if it's new sales, press two if you have an existing account with us and let's say they press option two and then it, it routes somewhere else, you know, it routes back to the main menu or routes to billing or route, it routes somewhere other than right to the queue. Essentially what they're usually doing, especially like new, new sales, they're looking to talk to someone right away. They don't, they don't want to deal with something inside. Uh, you know, they're looking to get some more information. Uh, integration issues. This is another thing that's going to be uh, really good for your CRMs, the data actions that's happening. If there's an issue pulling back or or, or getting the information, you want to make sure that you are working with whoever is managing your CRM uh, to make sure that that's integrated and working correctly. 
And then the error notifications. So there's error and warning. That's the yellow and red I kind of refer to all the time. Um, yellow, which is warning, is not is not going to stop you from publishing the call flow, but you want to ensure that uh, a lot of times they are um, prompts that you, you know prompts that could be into certain uh, certain components, um, but they don't need to be. Just make sure that they're they're not supposed to be there. I usually do that by entering blank audio. There's a section in there you can enter blank audio. I enter 100 milliseconds of blank audio, and then that goes away. It just makes sure that I verify before I I publish that everything's been taken care of. Obviously error, you're not gonna be able to. Um, now granted, you'll be able to highlight that and it'll take you to the error. That uh, will be something that we cover in one of the hands-on exercises, uh, but just make sure that you do identify those issues, correct those issues and retest your call flow after. So debugging techniques and tools. You'll see right here in this screenshot of the validate, this is that red or uh, error. Uh, it says data table lookup invalid value for DNS. So I did this on purpose. One thing you can do, which is really awesome, is when you go and press that or when you uh, hover over that red icon there, it will drop down to it. You can click on that uh, that row and it will take you to the error. That way you can see it right away. Um, then you'd be able to get in there, make sure that you uh, you have the right uh, value for the DNS. Uh, and then once it goes away, that will go away from the validate. If it doesn't, then you can hit click the validate button. It will then go through and validate and make sure it's right. That's their built-in error reporting call flow outline. It's just reviewing the call flow. You can kind of see here every place that does have a warning or a um, or an error will be either red or yellow. Uh, obviously, if it's red and yellow in the same, it's going to red is circumventing it because it's not going to be able to publish without it. Just kind of review that, make sure that's right, and then Genesis Cloud logs and analytics. Analytics is a little bit different. Call logs is the one I'm talking about with the comma module uh, for the call logs. So how to publish call flows. I know we've been through that a few times, but this is laid out here step by step. That way you have this for your notes later on. Obviously, like I've said in other modules, these are all able to be downloaded. You'll be able to download those, take care of it, um, and then just kind of refer back to here to make sure, you know, just kind of test yourself. Obviously, log into Genesis Cloud, accessing Architect through the admin icon, uh, and then selecting Architect, uh, open the call flow that you're looking to publish, uh, save your call flow after you've made changes, uh, and then test your call flow. So you can go ahead and test that. Um, remember, we, you shouldn't have to just save it. You should be able to publish because you're going to be having a dev call flow uh, in, alongside of the prod. So you should be able to go ahead and test, uh, publish, and then test that uh, that dev call flow before publishing to, to prod. Um, obviously, doing it after hours most likely is what your business is going to require. Publish it and then configure routing. And that's really... You already have configured routing if it is if it is dev because we're already we already set up the call route uh, we already have a number tied to it so you're already there on the configure routing. So considering before, considerations before deployment, thorough testing. Obviously, I think we've stressed that enough. Um, proper integration with Genesis Cloud components. That's really around the validate piece, making sure those are correct. Just kind of do a once over too. Make sure you when you're done with it and you're you're happy with it. Go step by step, making sure that okay, maybe I forgot to put one of the call logs here on on one of these uh, one of these paths. Um, oh, I forgot I flipped or I forgot to add a prompt, you know, a prompt to or a place for a prompt prompt, prompt placeholder. Excuse me. Um, let just look through that, visually see it, make sure that you're you're not passing anything. Um, that's the common mistake. It's just usually it's just simple stupid stuff that that we all forget every now and then um, that could bite us. And then assuring appropriate permissions. So tips for successful deployment. Um, obviously, all of the things we talked about, test call flows thoroughly before deployment. Um, that might be on every other slide as well. It's very important. Uh, version control for call flow updates. If something happens on that call flow and you put it into prod, not to worry. Don't freak out about it. If something happens and you start getting that, you can automatically go back click on the version that you just came from, export it, re-import it to prod, publish, ready to go. Uh, it does probably take five minutes to do that, all that work, but you're back up and running on the older version uh, and the more, more solid version. And always, always, always monitor call flow performance and optimize as needed. That's more important. It's almost like continuing your education. Uh, you always need to continue because the fast changing world of tech and software, you need to optimize yourself. Make sure you keep those call flows optimized too. So in conclusion, testing, debugging, and deployment, effective and are crucial aspects of managing a contact center using Genesis Cloud. 
As you embark on this journey, obviously it's essential to practice and refine your skills in creating, testing, debugging, and deploying call flows. This is just really an extension from all the other ones we're accumulating it. Next module, um, after you guys have your hands-on exercises and that, uh, that Q&A is module eight. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Thanks.